And if this is working, we should now be hey. live. <laughs> Good stuff. We're in. We're in. Welcome in, folks. How are we doing? Well, I see news be joining there. Right, let's test if the chats are working. The chats are working. That's a good sign <laughs> as well. Love that. We are live. Please do not swear. <laughs> <laughs> Especially you, Tom. No, you don't yeah, I know. I've got a foul mouth on me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, sorry we're a little bit late. Technical issues. You may notice a couple of guys dropping off here and there as we go. It's just the way it is. Because uh, we've not done this in a little while, gents. That is true. That is very true. I don't think I was part of Footyum the first time, or the last <laughs> time there was a Footyum special. I'm guessing you guys are watching it, so fingers crossed we can um, we can keep the quality at least close to the last one. We will do our best. So let's start with introductions. The man in the middle, the man who puts up with all the abuse on Discord. <laughs> some, some may argue some of which is deserved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 probably. Most of it. Most of it, to be honest. Um, hi, yeah. Hi, guys. I'm Roland. Um, I'm marketing lead at Footium. Um, I'm guessing most of you guys will have seen me around the Discord. Um, I joined joined Footium. If you haven't, I joined Footium a couple of months ago. Um, yeah, setting a low bar, thanks. Um, <laughs> I joined about, joined about two months ago. Um, I come from a film and TV background, worked in sports and tech. So I was working in Formula E uh, before... Um, joining joining Footium and then uh, sorry before moving into crypto actually I, I work for Outlier Ventures which is a crypto accelerator based in London um, and then have kind of been in uh, in blockchain ever since so yeah that's me no pressure Tom for your intro yeah I know yeah I, mine is less impressive I just play football manager on the internet uh, that's what I do so it's, it's not quite as exciting more fun though more fun for sure <laughs> Well, it depends. It depends. It is good fun, but I think working in Formula E and always cool crypto project is pretty fun too. Nice, thanks. Appreciate that. Good compliments. Charming. Can't believe no. Oh, he's gone. Done. Have I gone? I've gone. You've gone. I think I can still hear you <laughs> if that helps. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So while we're waiting on Roland to hopefully reconnect, is up the trunk. How are we doing, Leroy? Welcome on in. Everyone else, freak is in. Who else is there? All sorts. We have Zex. We have. Crispy, Brains, Castrix, Newsby, John, all the OGs making an appearance as well. I love how whoever's on the food team, I can't just say goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> I said, then, read this, I've been playing Helldivers, and I think they're on Steam servers. So if you've got patchy internet, you just drop out constantly. So apologies if this, this happens. I've not got the wired um, internet set up yet, which I probably need to do. Sam is on the account, by the way, so brace yourselves. Great. I'm we looking have forward a, to that. We have a brand risk on the, <laughs> <laughs> on the chat. I'm just going to mention Sir Jim anytime he says something a bit cheeky. <laughs> we question for you before we get started there, Roland. How's the puppy? Yeah, he's all right, actually. I mean, to be honest, partly why I was late was he he's finally having his like manic half hours um, and he's been chewing up the house. Um, he chewed my partner's cardigan to bits. Um, he start, he's been grabbing the carpets, ripping up rugs. So, like, trying to pull him off random things. But he's gone to sleep underneath my feet now. So, hopefully, he'll be all right. And that seems as good as time any to start the sand slagging as is tradition. So, um, I just realised I didn't actually introduce myself. So, yeah, my name's Moza. Like Tom, I used to spend my days making FM content and now... Well, unlike Tom, I've kind of retired from it. So it's just Footium and Photo Finish stuff I do these days. So welcome on it. And enough man you slagging for now. We are going to start watching a game. So those of you who have jumped in who have no idea about Footium, about where we're at, you may have heard about the game, but you don't know what's happening. We are in season zero, which officially is the first proper full season with every club involved. It's kind of half test season, half real season. There's no real money prizes on this season. I'll let Roland get into the proper spiel shortly. But we are about, courtesy of Tom, to watch a top of the table clash. And I can see there's goals already in Division yeah, well, 2. I've got some bad news. I was uh, looking at the top of the table clash thinking, wow, this is going to be amazing, right? In Division 2, League 2 between uh, Wiley Athletic and 
Naruf, probably how you don't say it. Uh, I was on game 22 looking at that. Uh, <laughs> game 21. So that's actually tomorrow, guys. That's actually tomorrow. I'm oh, um, we can reschedule. We can reschedule. It's fine. Exactly. But Naruf are actually winning right now. Um, if we can jump into that game, you can see they're one up. And uh, looking at that title push towards the end of the season. And there is a shot. And it's a goal. We jumped at the oh. moment. It's almost you like we planned it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's actually five minutes behind at the moment. There. So. <laughs> wow. Good so, stuff. yeah. Well, we start by anyone who's maybe watching who hasn't seen anything since the previous streams. So they may have seen a very different footage before what we have now. Um, just an idea of where we're at and where we're going, Roland. Yeah, so um, this is season zero, and as you can see, um, we're, we're live on mainnet, so um, we're, we're live on Arbitrum at the moment. These games have been playing for the last 20, 20 or so days, I think it is. Um, the transfer market's live with players, players have dropped to squads, people have been transferring, building squads, um, and playing league games um, throughout the last 20 days. Um, this is season zero, and, and as Moza said, um, it's kind of half play test, um, half proper season. Um, the, the kind of main goal of this season was for us to, one, launch on mainnet, um, and then two, kind of improve on the scaling um, of, of Footium. So we've got every single club playing, every game playing and, and doing kind of network tests and things like that. And so that's what the devs have been working on and, and fixing in the in the background as, as the league's gone on. Um, but we wanted it to kind of have the same stakes as a, as a full um, season. So there's a lot of prizes up for grabs. Um, there's a lot of raffle tickets that can be earned. Um, we're giving away uh, Division 4 clubs. I think we're giving away a Division 3 club. We've yeah. got legendary players, rare players. Um, we're giving away bronze players as well. Um, and so hopefully there's a lot of things that people can get involved in. We're also giving away the kind of the classic badge upgrades as well. Um, so, yeah, so there's a lot to kind of play for. And we've had like record numbers of people jumping in as well. So it's been really exciting to see. Um, we've had, I think last time I checked, it was over 600 unique wallets. We've got a kind of daily, daily active user base of about 400 people jumping into play. Um, and if you think about, right, so Pirate Nation, which is like running around the shop at the moment, um, they're doing fantastic stuff. They're running at about 600 daily active users. So for for kind of Web3 games, we're doing really, really well. It's it's staying fairly po uh, positive. We're staying fairly like popular. Um, and, you know, you guys are stuck with us throughout. And I think it's a good testament to um, how decent and polished the game is at the moment um obviously there's still lots of bits to be to be done um and we've had a lot of great feedback um and that's another key thing about that season zero right oh we've got another shot here ah oh, never mind um so yeah so that's the other thing that season zero is about is get gathering feedback from you guys um which we'll hopefully chat a bit about later and talk about a bit about some of the questions you guys have got um but hopefully you've enjoyed it uh, anyone who's um who's been uh playing anyone who owns a club who's got a team hopefully you've you've been jumping in each day and, and jumping into matches and giving getting a taste for sort of main net games and anyone that hasn't done that yet um now's the time to look um get involved there's lots to happen the rest of this year so um now's the time by the way if you do have questions we will fire them at roland and we will not hold any back so <laughs> please do like, please try my best. to fill the chat with them um, oh, while we're doing that Brains, first question. I hear a badge upgrade's been given away to a viewer. <laughs> is oh right, is there? Is there? First I first I heard brains. First I heard. I'll think about it. Give me half an hour. If you can soften me up by just sending a load of compliments in chat and telling me how handsome and gorgeous I look, I might think about it. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> but um, I'll throw it to you, Tom, because obviously we are used to playing FM most of the time. So this has been something a bit different for us as well. What are your thoughts so far? Yeah, I've really enjoyed it. I think it's it's something a bit different, right? Uh, you know, although it's a football management game, it is you know completely different in that sort of fantasy realm. You're, I feel, there's a lot more maligned as you're the owner of the club, and there's all these decisions to be making about your players and what to do with them. So I've really enjoyed playing it. I've had a lot of fun uh, testing out formations and different tactics, um, signing a few players, selling a few players. Uh, it's been really fun to sort of get to used to those sort of fundamental mechanics. Uh, I'm looking forward to having a test uh, with some other things later down the line. 
Uh, but I, what I would say, as we've just seen another goal, by the way, wow, 3-0 <laughs> to no rough. Uh, fantastic work for them. Wiley Athletic are won the Lutbo in their game, so it's looking like it is going to go down to the final day of the season between those two teams. Oh, which really nice. exciting. Very tight. Um, but obviously, this has all been part of you know trying to get some testing going, right, uh, and working out what works and what's maybe not quite working yet um, in, in Footium. So what are sort of the best bits of feedback you've had from Season Zero so far? Um, I think some of the really key stuff has been the, the itty bitty stuff. So um, things that we might not have spotted before. Um, I think the, there was there's more of a focus on mobile than than we were originally expecting. So um, trying to make sure that 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 kind of system works, or making kind of clear priority decisions internally about how we build for mobile mobile, or if we build for mobile as a, as a priority. Um, I think it's been really nice to see people kind of interacting with the game on mass. Like we do a lot of play tests internally um, through staging, but there's, you know, there's only so many games we can watch and play. So getting, you know, 3000 games played every two days is, is a great way for us to pick up on things that we wouldn't have seen otherwise. Um, we've had kind of network things right, right at the beginning of the season. We had that day where we had to pause games. So there was a great chance for us to um, pause and, and go right what are our contingency plans here are they going to work right we, we kind of prepared contingencies but it's different when you're on mainnet compared to testnet right it's different when you're playing demo where you're not actually on chain um, and so being able to do that on chain and deal with certain issues you know rescheduling making sure that the the level there's a level playing field for people regardless of how games run um obviously we've had concerns about the match engine as well um and that's been really fascinating for me coming in um you know quite recently and not necessarily fully appreciating the kind of history of where footium has gone and getting an understanding for um the the thoughts and feelings that people might have around how games play out um is is really really important statistics as we're looking at here um is clearly more you know incredibly important to, to the community so you know that's again it's a really interesting thing to understand so i think feedback across the board has been really useful it's we're, we're very community driven right so the, the end goal is that um, the direction that we take the game will be based around the priorities that the community have um we we obviously have our own thoughts and feelings um but the a big chunk of that is making sure that the community um the footing community kind of get the things that they want um and and yeah at the same time we have to prioritize right so um understanding where the the key the key parts of the uh, clamor are and and uh, making sure that people are as, as as looked after as possible so um hopefully we'll talk a bit more about about that later and kind of what we're thinking we can do in response to the feedback we have so far um and, and as always we'll be running a feedback form at the end of the season so um there'll be an opportunity for people to um put a huge amount of uh, their thoughts and feelings into that as well so um we're you know always always keen to gather more feedback we have just missed a penalty yeah, I missed the target from a penalty. Oh, no. Wow, <laughs> he just sent it, blasted it wide or over one of the two. Oh, no. So, just a quick one for Forum Ash and Stanley, Forum Ash and Stanley, sorry, and Blockchain Guardian. We'll get to that because Roland's going to talk to you about what comes next for season one and so on shortly. Uh, one question here from Crispy a uh, follow up a club purchase that doesn't come with players. Do we get new players generated? And that was after asking why they were separated it was because mm. of the audit they were separated is that right for security yeah so um the, the, the there was a real in attempt internally to make it so that clubs and players were bundled together um there are token standards that allow for those kind of trades to happen um the reality is at the moment the the security for that um those kind of systems doesn't really exist there's ways for people to kind of basically rug pull you on on purchases if you buy as a bundle um you'll notice that OpenSea used to have a bundle system um open on their website um and they've taken that down now so um you know we, we're not the only people seeing nft bundles being a kind of challenge um from a, from a security standpoint and so what we felt was was that it was important to uh, get the game into people's hands and the decision was made to provide those things individually because people can still make trades um, with individual um, items. Uh, although, there, of, of course, we understand that there are 
you know, slightly more challenging routes to getting that done, um, the security is there. And that's what's really important to us is to ensure that um, the game stays safe, that people are looked after, that, um, you know, that people feel as though um, they're not being kind of messed around by other players and that things are as trustless as possible. So that was the kind of route we went with with players. Um, and then there was a second question about uh, player generation. Is that right? Yeah. So um, basically asking if players would be generated when buying a new club. And there are players there, but they're not very good, if I remember rightly, when you first buy a club. Yeah. So when you buy a club, um, at the moment you get reserve players. Um, so reserve players are deliberately not very good. Um, the, the, it's, the intention is just to give you placeholder teams. Um, during staging, I actually took on a Division 8. Um, so during our own internal player tests, I took on a Division 8 club and messed around with kind of reserve players. And you can kind of, if you're actively trying to manage, you can kind of do OK. It, you, you're generally going to lose, um, but you can kind of compete. There's a little bit more... Um, Kind of uh, ability and skill in there than um, than if you you know you just the, the team was gutted, um, but your the, your player generation will primarily primarily come through the academy at the moment, um, and and the academy is where those new players will generate. So um, I think it was five players for for season zero, um, and then for future seasons, um, hopefully those those players will refresh and regenerate, um, and you'll have the chance to to gain new intake as well um but at the moment the the best players you're going to find are on the open sea market um you'll be able to get them um from other players at floor price you can you can build a team for a very very low cost um so you know it's it's for division eight clubs the entry is not too bad we think that um you know hopefully people can can engage if they want to um and then if you're looking to build a club out and, and climb the rankings then um, you know, again, jumping into the transfer market and negotiating with other um, team, main t uh, sorry, other club owners is always the way to go. Um, jump into Discord and have a chat with people through our channels and, and get involved. That's, you know, part of the game. I'll go into the next one, but I'll get to Tom first because we're at half time. We've chosen a goal fest. Yeah, well, obviously we were watching the uh, the No Rough game. They were 3-0 up in their title fight, uh, you know, to try and get top of the table. The team who were top of the table were 2-0 up, but I've just noticed that they've uh, gone from 2-0 up to 3-2 down. Wow. And that has huge implications for the title battle, so I think it's worth watching this one. Uh, it looks nice. like both teams are fully managed, but no zombie teams in this game. Uh, so, uh, New Trance Albion are trying to get a fight back here with their 4-1-2-1-2 against the 3-4-3 uh, attacking, which is a very attacking formation. I've used it a few times, actually. It does get you goals, but it does leave you exposed at the back, as we've seen here in this game. And that is a beautiful segue, because my next question for Roland from the chat from T-Break, will deeper tactical options be a priority? Yeah, so um, we'll, we'll probably get on to uh, match and game engine um, changes uh, later in the stream. Um, giving people kind of deeper tactical decisions and things is something that's on our radar. Um, the, the key thing about Footium is that we see ourselves as a kind of sort of mid-core, right? So we want people to be able to access the game um, uh, at a fresher level. Um, you know, I play football manager, but if you haven't played football manager before, it can take some time to get used to. We, we want to find a balance between fantasy Premier League and uh, football manager, right? And so we want to offer deeper tacti tactical choices if we can, but we also want to make sure that, that it's accessible and it's easy to understand for new users um, and people that might be fresh to, to football as well. So striking a balance um, is something that we're always thinking about. Um, I think there will be a, a kind of movement towards other tactical options. Uh, what that looks like um, is, is something that we wouldn't want to kind of concretely define as of yet, but it's definitely something that we're looking at internally. Um, and, and it all factors into the kind of game and match engine um, improvements that will, you know, th that will be going on forever, right? So we'll always be looking to improve things, optimize stuff, um, provide tactical options that will make the game feel as positive as possible. Um, and, and if that's through giving more deeper uh, tactical options, then that's, you know, that will be the route to go down. Oh cover that one brains later just after the game because i think that's one thing roland was going to talk about about what comes next and what the priorities are and um, here's a good one from poeli i'm sorry if i've said that wrong um are you and the team surprised on how many bugs and how much feedback has come through or was it expected 
I don't think we've been surprised per se. I think what we found is that it's it's been incredibly helpful. Um, we we always get a lot of feedback um, through feedback forms, and um, I am a real advocate for getting people involved in discussion. Um, I don't see kind of feedback as something that we would want to get less of. There will always be places where we can improve, right? Um, you know, you look at AAA game studios and you jump into like a subreddit. There's thousands and thousands of comments on different upgrades and fixes and nerfs and buffs and things like that so um it's pretty standard to get feedback from people especially when we've got such fantastic uh community as we do um i think what we've been uh, really interested by is in that sense of scale right so 600 people jumping in and testing it is something that we've not had before and so we're picking up a lot more and then making sure that the game is as polished as possible because of that. The more people uh, people report bugs, the more feedback we get, the more polished the game becomes um, and, and, and hopefully the better it becomes and, and, and hopefully more people will jump in. And so there's a kind of cycle there. So um, it, I would say it was expected in a sense that that's what we were hoping for. And, and we've seen a fantastic amount of um, information being provided by players. And we're going to push you guys for more, right? We're going to be sending this feedback form out and, and really asking you further questions. So um, it'll be exciting to see what people have to say. Is that a 4 2 at all? It's a 4 2 now for New, new, new Traunt, New Traunt Albion. I always struggle with every single team name in this, but uh, they are fantastic names. I am a, I am a big fan. Uh, but yeah, 4-2, Wiley Athletic could be seeing the title slip away from their fingers right now. And in fact, they are watching right now. They've just changed to a 5-2-3 formation uh, and bringing on a few tired bodies as well. I'm not sure if they've actually made uh, the tactical changes. But yeah, they made subs at half-time, bringing some, yeah. some players on. So it's not gone well for them. <laughs> By the way, bronze player is up for grabs for anyone who can pronounce Sam's team name. He can't even <laughs> pronounce it, so good luck. Uh, can can I one. have it if I win, please? I'd like that. <laughs> I can do it. I can say it. Roland can provide it. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> will you be creating an on website, so in game transfer engine, transfer market, so we don't have to use OpenSea? Um, I think over the next, I would say over the next 12 months or so, um, as we kind of build the, the, the game out, we go through launch, um, you know, there's there's kind of polish on that side. Um, the, the transfer engine isn't a, a number one priority, but it's definitely something that's, that's on the list. And I, I know from the devs, it's something that they're keen to look at. Um, mm -hmm. It also kind of gives us the opportunity to pro provide um, systems that are more appropriate for, for club owners than say OpenSea might provide. Um, the, the the reality at the moment is that the open we did a little metadata update um during the season for um for open sea we may well continue to refresh that to improve it um and we've got some fantastic uh community apps that have been created uh during season zero and before season zero that help people with scouting so we feel that at the moment the system is is good enough for us to kind of move forward and the response that we've had from the community in regards to transfers and, and scouting has been fairly fairly positive so um it's definitely on our radar and it is something that we'll we'll look at into the future but i think in the kind of uh short term it's it's probably something that's a lower priority um to to kind of look at and a nice quick one to follow up on that will stats in terms of scorers for kind of leagues and teams and so on becoming for next season so um i think we need to do our next season bit where we'll cover those kind of things off in, yeah. in short term um but i think again stats is something that, that we're aware of um it's definitely something the team is looking at we want to provide more i think there's a keenness like um so for the end of, so take for my my perspective from a marketing perspective um i'd really like to do a season zero recap where we get like the highest scoring team um on footium the the top goal scorer on footium um those kind of bits of information um and put out a really cool recap piece um you know I, i'm talking going to talk to the team about getting those kind of things set up so there's a demand not just from you guys but there's also demand from from us internally and the team's keen for it so I think that's something that we may see in, into the future um, is, is improvement. I think based on the feedback that we've had within season zero at the moment, there's kind of slightly more pressing priorities. 
So um, if we can get to our nice to haves, it might be something that we look at. Um, but I think at the moment, what we need to do is the absolute musts and needs. Uh, Freak, I see you've put another question in there, so I'll throw half of it at Roland because no half of it is getting worked on. Um, that bug with players going with clubs when they're sold is getting worked on, isn't it? Roland? Yeah, it is. Yeah. So um, you might, if, if any of you have had these issues um, previously uh, and you've put a support ticket in, you might have spotted that George will jump in and, and, and help to some degree manually um through through uh the back end so we're aware it's it's an issue um and yes it is something that we're looking to solve for um it's sh- i actually thought it was part of the game at first and then george sent me he's <laughs> like no mate it's a bug like we're looking to fix it i was like oh right cool yeah okay so yes it is bug it is being fixed um and uh we've got a kind of minor work around at the moment um but obviously it's something that we want to to kind of get into the system so it's it's automated so just before I ask the next one, it's now 4-3. Wiley's on the comeback Oof. trail. Yeah, Thomas Sitch with the... Oh, what about you lose, Tom, I think. Oh. He got too excited. His computer <laughs> came back on it. <laughs> Kicked his computer. Uh, the yeah. Wi-Fi went. It was too too exciting. Oh, he's uh, doing well. So just while we wait for Tom to come back, uh, the other thing Freak was asking was about kickoff times. So are we going to be able to pick them? Um, so I think kickoff times has been a hotly debated topic. Um, I think that we do want to look at different systems for it. The reality is, is like with scaling footium, um, only a certain number of games can be played per, per hour. Um, Mm -hmm. and our concerns around picking times is the reality is people will probably, you know, there'll be a bell curve towards specific times. Um, and it's going to be difficult for us to accommodate, uh, people, if everybody asks for the 8 p.m. GMT slot, right? So um, we have to have some kind of distribution. Um, and at the moment, the distribution system we have um, kind of slightly advantages higher division clubs. Um, but there is some, there's potentially some room for us to adjust that distribution for future seasons and to and kind of um, look at, you know, activity of leagues and things to, to kind of assess. Um, I think post discussions, it's not, like a pressing issue Uh, people seem to be making the games that they're they're getting to and we feel that the changes that you can make pre-match should be enough that you can kind of um you know still compete we are aware it's something that people would like so it's it's definitely on the agenda um i think the the challenge is with with picking it is that kind of case of like we'd end up with 1500 games all playing at the same time um Mm -hmm. And and reality is we have to have some level of distribution if, to simulate that number of events all at once. Um, so that's one of the considerations. Uh, another consideration we've had was like, can we just randomly assign matches across a, a full um, season so that people get a big uh, variation on times? Um, you know, can we provide randomized league times every season so there's like different options that we we're looking at and and things that we can consider but i don't think there's a kind of cemented um choice on that as of yet and because um it's it's something that people can somewhat manage with um it's it's probably something that we'll look at in the near future because it's something that people are asking for but i don't think it's an absolute immediate concern yeah roger uh tom are you still there? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It just, I think the excitement of the goal really uh, just messed with my <laughs> Wi-Fi connection then for a moment. And actually, whilst I was disconnected, uh, you, Truant, scored another one to make it 5-3. And then Wiley Athletic have also scored a fourth goal. So it's a 5-4 thriller we've got here heading into the final 10 minutes. Uh, Wiley need a goal to, God, I don't know, give themselves a better chance in the in the season finale tomorrow because uh, no rough art, six still up in their game. They're winning. They've got three points there. Um, and wow, Ooh, it's dude, another what? goal for neutral on Albion. Oh. I mean, that's it for Wiley in terms of this game now. There's no way they're going to be winning this one. And they're going to move into, well, drop from first to second place for that final game of the season. Uh, so no rough art, dancing in the streets tonight. <laughs> Here's an easy one, Roland. Will goalkeepers be able to score next season? <laughs> absolutely, yes. As a goalkeeper myself, <laughs> it will be staying in the game. Um, yes, absolutely. It's it's a it's a key bug fix for us. Um, 
we I think it's been present in a couple of play tests. Um, I think uh, new events have come up um, that have, have created goalkeeper goals. Um, I kind of like personally like us to keep like a, an incredibly small percentage of them in, um, but I think the likelihood <laughs> is that yes, they will be they will be removed. Um, and and you shouldn't see goalkeepers scoring as frequently as they are. I hope you've enjoyed seeing it over the season. Um, but yes, it's definitely something that we'll be we'll be fixing in the short term. Kenneth Sadden will have had eleven goals now in this game, and not a single goalkeeper has scored. Yeah, I know. I was looking to see if there was a goalkeeper who scored one, but uh, <laughs> but no, sadly not. No assist either. But uh, oh, you know, there's still Wiley, there's still two minutes of game time to go. Wiley may have gone ultra attacking and regretted a society. Uh, Potentially. Have you had any success with that, guys? Going attacking, ultra attacking, defensive, me- mixing about a bit. I've I've avoided it personally. I mean, I go I go balanced or defensive every time. But I think the I I'm sitting third or fourth in the league, so I wouldn't follow my own advice personally. Um, <laughs> right, that's all I can say. Yeah, I think I've mostly been balanced. There's been some times where I was a goal down heading into the final you know, 15 minutes and think, right, let's check it on ultra attacking. And yeah, it has worked on some occasions. I think I've gone defensive a, a couple of times toward the start of the season when I had like a two goal lead just to see and experiment how things work there. And mm-hmm. I won the game. So I guess it does, you know, have a desired impact. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's been fun to sort of experiment with and, and kind of see, yeah. I think it also made, I mean, my feeling is that it, having played it in, in staging as well, is that it also kind of depends on, on the rating of your players, right? So, like, for me personally, I've got a team where my, my highest rated player is, is my centre forward. So I feel like I can play more defensively because I can rely on um, my attacking players when the chances arise. So it kind of, I, I guess it kind of depends on, on the ratings of your players overall. Um, but again, it's all theory. Um, if, I was, if I was running away with the league, I'd have more confidence. <laughs> Here's one following up on an earlier question. You were talking about kickoff times. So, are, if they are going to be set in stone initially based on the league you're in, will there be the ability to set up subs before games? So planning ahead. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a very it's a very much a kind of ethos and philosophy thing with with how much we provide people. Um, kind of tools to set up their systems pre-game um i think what we need to do is analyze how much kickoff times are an issue how many people are are checking in live and and then how much people want these kind of abilities to to just schedule um the game in as a whole we wanted to provide a system where there was a a slight incentive for for people to, to jump in live and play the game um actively you know, it's fun to have that feeling of um, be it managing your own side and being able to make changes on the fly. Um, but you know, there's been there's been different kind of requests in regards to presets, preset subs, um, having lineups that you can change and set. Um, it's definitely something that we're kind of aware of, and I imagine um, we'll we'll sit on the kind of devs um, sprint sheets further down the line um but it, it is an ethos thing right so um it's something that we can provide but we also want to provide an active environment where people um actually get a chance to watch their games and, and feel as though they are able to affect the game um actively so um we'll, we'll see we'll, we'll definitely see and i think the, the opportunity is there for people to jump into the feedback forms and and kind of request those things and and talk to us a bit about their kickoff times it gives a better understanding of you know the frustrations they might be having or that they do enjoy the the kind of system as it currently stands and then we can make an assessment off of that forgive me tom is there a team in that league called wincest uh <laughs> there is there is <laughs> um <laughs> is the manager anonymous by any chance <laughs> yeah it may well be <laughs> Uh, that's my yeah. second favourite name I've seen so far. <laughs> uh, if anyone was at the meetup at uh, Leighton O'Reilly, the first one, you'll remember an Italian gent who uh, bought a, a, a club by the name of Minge, which was quite funny as well. Um, I don't think he knew where it was when he first bought it, so that was that. <laughs> but um, moving on very swiftly. Uh, Red cards is something else that's been brought up in the chat. I've seen a couple of times. Um, so obviously they seem to not quite have been working 100% this time round. Mm-hmm. Um, keepers weren't meant to get bookings, and I've seen one got a red card as well. Yeah. So um, what are the thoughts on how that's going to impact if we go forward? 
Yeah, so again, these come into these kind of core game engine fixes, um, the the kind of the, the bug uh, adjustments, and, and I think things like goalkeepers getting red cards that probably shouldn't be happening, right? So yeah. um, that's that's definitely something that we'll be you know prioritizing and are working on. Um, I think it's worth saying that, uh, that you know the devs are working in the background on future releases um, during season zero, right? So certain things we can get bug fixes out for, and other things we want to hold and wait until we kind of get the next next release out. Um, so a lot of these things we are working on and have worked on already. Um, it's, it's on the basis of that quality is once the season's launched. Don't impact it too much because let's say your goalkeeper gets sent off at the beginning of the season, um, and further down the line, the fix is made, and so nobody else gets goalkeeper sent off. You'd feel a bit hard done by, right? So, uh, we want to make sure that as the system releases, if this is season zero and goalkeepers get red cards, then it's a red card goalkeeper season, and that's you know, that's how it works. So, there's challenges there, of course, because we want to make these fixes as quickly as possible, um, but we we kind of feel as though we have to ensure a fair playing field and and that's that's kind of the kind of core focus so yes hopefully there will be a fix um in in the next release um and and we'll be making those adjustments accordingly right one last question before we move into some information i think you're going to reveal for everyone so the dreaded word condition is that going to be fixed or a fix attempted in time for the next season so the the game engine is a lot more complex than, um, you know, a simple kind of uh, like the stamina is an issue or player ratings are an issue or positional things are an issue. It becomes a big mixed bag of lots of different things and, and lots of different factors can create odd oddities within end results. So um, the team are kind of looking at it at a, as a whole um, and we're aiming to continue to make adjustments. Um, we, um, we're going to talk a bit in a bit about kind of how that that's going to look like as, as we develop forward um and Moz, you can tell me when you want me to kind of push those those announcements out but um i think fundamentally it's also good to remember that condition uh, and stamina differ across football games right so um you know some of us who, who play football manager might feel as though like once a player is below 70 uh Conditional stamina is pretty useless, right? Um, below the, 90, mate. Below 90. <laughs> yeah, below 90. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So, so with footy, and we we thought, you know what? Like, there's kind of certain languages that people use for different football games. And if you you, you go below 70, you think I'm not going to use this player anymore. We thought, well, actually, um, we want to work a system where players are still viable um, further down. And that the reality is, yeah, you can be knackered, but you see in in real life, right, that teams play three games a week and yeah, they're pretty tired, but they still manage to pip a win um, and they still manage to play well if, if their, their skill is, is decent enough. So um, the, the kind of the, the, the game engine below uh, the surface doesn't necessarily always work in the same way that you might expect it to in, in other footballing games. Um, but we're also aware that maybe that's a, that's a frustration on itself. So we might want to make adjustments there. Um, it might be that the condition is affecting certain simulations under the surface that need to be adjusted in certain ways. So um, we are aware of condition stamina as being concerned for the community. Um, and what we're aiming to do is continually refine the game engine to, to make it um, less of a concern. Uh I was going to move on to something else, um, just a quick one, quite like that, is a thing in the Discord, and I'll mention I just now, it's discord.gg forward slash footium if you want to join it. In general, I believe it was Hibby earlier on had stats about how many players have been minted if you want to go and have a look uh, in there. So let's have a bit of fun and give Roland's voice a rest. Just before we get to the rares chat, Tom, have you got any predictions of what rares are going to look like? Uh, I think they're going to be what we've got now, like the bronze cards, but on steroids. So they're going to just be really jacked, <laughs> uh, massive. Uh, everyone's got a mohawk. And, <laughs> or, or they've got like a blue afro from FIFA, because if someone was good on FIFA, pro <laughs> yeah. foot, a blue afro. Uh, um, so that also means probably like five foot one as well. Uh, because of that, that also means you're pretty good. Uh, so yeah, that's that's my that's my prediction. Just Jack guys with either mohawks or blue afros. Before I give you my prediction, Crispy, absolutely tell us where your pub is, right? So <laughs> I think that they're going to be better than bronze, but maybe below gold, so somewhere in that kind of 
silver region, but worse initially with good potential. That's my prediction. So have you got any alpha for us here, Roland? So, I mean, it's difficult because I feel like I, I almost give too much away in the Discord, right? So so, um, so with rares, uh, the we're going to be putting forms out in the next couple of weeks um, for people to uh, apply for the rares that they've won um, during competitions. Um, for rares that spawn in your academy, they will have a much higher potential than standard players. Um, they will generally reach a kind of similar bracket in skill. Um, and so their, their kind of starting rating will be should be similar as well. Marco's probably getting... Re if he's watching this, he's going to be like, <laughs> Roland, this is all wrong. I can't believe you're saying <laughs> You're promising way too much. But this is how I understand it. It may still change depending on development, right? So all of this is still open. But the idea is, is that academies um, throughout from Division 1 to Division 8 will have a chance of winning uh, or kind of having one of their players spawn um, as... Oh, bet you i've cut out have i cut out or am i still in no you're still here oh okay amazing um i was really hoping i'd cut out then um so if you cut out, i was just going to give uncreate information and just yeah yeah, the yeah so so the idea is basically your rares will um for people that haven't won them in competitions you will you will... No. he's genuinely just dropped <laughs> he's genuinely just dropped so what we're going to um what we're going to make up about uh well i think in my rare academy, I'm gonna have. If, if they've not got a mohawk or a blue afro, then they will be kicked out of my squad. Um, so, <laughs> you know, there better be some player generation with blue afros and mohawks, otherwise, I will be really getting rid of a few players. Gonna put this thing. from through to design because I think it's a great idea. I think it's a fantastic idea. <laughs> I think we, yeah. So we're gonna say no. I won't say no. Um, but yeah. So the idea is that everyone's gonna have a chance. Um, academy drops will be lower the lower the divisions um, you go. Um, so you've got high chance in high division clubs. Um, the idea is that they've got a very high potential. So we want to give gut people an opportunity to get a highly rated player. But it's a it's a it's got to be a system where you've got to work for it, right? So you've got to train them, you've got to play them, you've got to build that potential up, um, make sure that you're putting it in the right places, training them in the right skills. So um, that's kind of that's kind of where we're at. The the competition rares will kind of work similarly, I believe. So again, Marco might correct me further down the line. So just don't take this as total concrete information. This is me alpha leaking basically is as i understand it i'll probably get shouted out by george tomorrow but i'm trying <laughs> uh, is is that the the rare competition um drops will be players that are similar to what you've got with your squads so they will be rare players that are slightly further down the line um, and may have used some of their potential already so that it feels as though these are kind of players that maybe were playing in the premier league and have come across to to the ffl for a bit of a pay packet right um that's the that's the kind of goal um and and so we're not talking old um but what we're talking is is that you will see some of the benefits of of that potential immediately i think in part because we felt that um if you got these players out of the academy they might not have the same impact for for certain divisions as they might others um, and we wanted to kind of adjust for that accordingly. So um, that's still open and, and Rares is still in development. Um, it's still something that we're adjusting for. Um, there's a lot of admin for me to kind of do um, in the back end as well. So I've got to get this form out. There'll be an opportunity for people to submit um, their kind of evidence for having one Rares. I need wallet addresses from people to be able to drop them. Um, but it's something that we're actually working on. It's something that we really feel is a high priority thing to, to kind of launch for people and get people testing because we need to understand how these rare players impact the, the game ecosystem as well. Um, and, and so, you know, we want to know it's like, how well do they perform within matches? If there's a 1,500 uh, matches playing a day, that's a great way for us to understand how these rare players um, are impacting the games and how you guys are using them. So um, that's, that's very much on the cards. Um, and I was talking th through with George today about, let's say like the next month and a half. Um, and that kind of those, those rare players are a key, key part of that discussion. Chris, we don't worry. They've got a list of everyone who has won rares. They know yeah. who has them. So it's just to stop people claiming they've got them that haven't won them. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm not naming names. <laughs> Me, I, I'll, I'll try and do it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so basically the academy rares will be the same age as any academy players, but 
competition rears will be say early to mid twenties, just to give a rough idea. Poten- a yeah, potentially. Yeah, yeah, potentially. I think that's what the intention is at the moment. Again, as I said, like everything changes. Um, Marco, who um, is managing the, the kind of rare player um, build, he's off on holiday at the moment. He's taken some time out. He's been he, like he's been working super super hard to kind of get the the season zero systems up and working on kind of future of footium. So um, he's having a bit of time away at the moment. So um, it, it may adjust. We'll see. Um, Archie's also working on it as well. Um, but those are the kind of, that's kind of direction as I understood it um, from our last conversation. But as with all of these things being developed, things can adjust and change. So the best thing to do, guys, is to, to stick around in Discord, um, keep an eye on announcements, and, and I'll try to keep you up to date as best as I can. Always bear in mind that... Um, I'm getting this information as and when, and I've got to kind of provide that information to you in a way where it's as clear as possible, but there's there's an openness about potential change. So there may be some um, adjustments, but but as, as Moza said, we've got a list of, of people that have one. The main focus is, is about verification. So making sure that people aren't claiming them when they didn't actually have them. Um, and I believe that Sam tried his best to announce people that did win, that they, he sent messages to people and things like that. Um, so it's just about kind of keeping track of, of what that looks like. Um, but yeah, we've got a good understanding of, of that. Inside. He tried his best. <laughs> he did great. He did great. <laughs> um, that might be a good segue. Um, so, obviously, these rare players need to get dropped before the next season. Yeah. So, just before we get into what comes next, again, we'll go to Tom for predictions. A prediction of what's coming next. What's coming next? What what are we looking forward to in the next season? Well, I think what's coming next are probably rare players with blue mohawks and an afro. <laughs> I would say, um, or no, just just no hawk, any colour, and blue afro specifically. That's my my prediction. Of what's coming next? Um, well, look, I I think I think let's not speculate. Let's just throw it straight to it, and I want to hear the news. Cool. Let's go for it. Let's do it. I'm feeling nervous. I feel like we need a drum roll. Um, so, so this is so this was our thought, right? So, you guys might have been in the Discord around March. Um, there's been discussion around season one taking place in in late summer, um, and and that's been our goal, right? So, we're 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 aiming for late summer for 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 season one. Of course, these things can change, as we've, we've discussed before. Um, I've joined the team quite recently, and I've seen you guys really enjoying season zero. The the kind of we've had a lot of feedback, but we've had a huge amount of positive feedback as well. Um, and and we felt look like late summer. That's that's a lot of months away, right? For us to get to to having this game launched in the you know adding training in, giving people access to real money prizes, making sure that kind of potential systems work. There's requests for game engine changes. Can we wait four months for game engine changes to come in? Like you know, and then we need to kind of check through those things and test them. So. Um, the, the kind of conversation that we've been having internally has been around, well, how can we bridge that gap? How can we bridge the gap from now until um, until until season one? And, 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 I, and I sort of said, I said, well, could we literally just do season zero again? And, and the conversation was like, well, mm, there's a lot of kind of fixes that we need to make. And there's, there's frustrations that people have. And actually just doing season zero again doesn't work. So, so at the moment, what we're thinking is, that we provide you guys with an extra season between now and the launch of season one. Um, we'll bring in those upgrades, those major kind of upgrades that we that people have been clamoring for um, in a way where we can do some quality assurance tests. So actually work out if this stuff is going to work or not. Um, and at the same time, give you another opportunity to get involved with footy and play the game that you guys have access to, that you've bought into, um, and, and fill summer with more football, right? So um, that's the discussion that's at the moment. Um, we, we, we think that that might be something that we could do possibly in July. Um, as I said, it's still open. Um, we have an idea of what we'd like to cover within that, but we need to get these feedback forms out, right? We need you guys to tell us what you're looking for and for us to have a really clear understanding of what you need. Um, we, you know, the adjustments that we can make within that time frame won't necessarily be absolutely everything that you're asking for because time is is kind of a resource that is limited. Um, 
but the things that we we've, we've kind of discussed internally so far have been like can we give people access to like a limited version of training so they get a bit of access to mainnet tra uh, training um so they can kind of test the systems out and give us a bit of feedback on the user experience changes that we've made if we make match engine upgrades or up, uh, changes can we get people to give us feedback on if that system is working or not do people feel like they have more control over when they play against zombie teams or not we want to kind of do api improvements right so um we need to improve the security of the system we need to build more stability we need to allow for more scalability is that something else that we can kind of look at and then we talked briefly again about the transfer market so um you know are there more metadata improvements that we can make so these are kind of some of the ideas that we've got and what we've based feedback on so far but obviously that's just like that's a few people within discord having those conversations on forums so what we need is people to get onto those feedback forms and give us that clear feedback so that um you know with the limited time we have um between now and and this this kind of extra season within the summer we can look at kind of give you some things that you're really asking for within that we would also want to get those rare players out as well right so um we want to give people more and and keep people engaged and make sure that they're enjoying the game as, as best as they can um you know and and look if you guys don't want that, we can wait. We'll we'll go carry on with the late no, no, summer no, launch no, no. uh, for, for season one. If you we want, want. still wait. <laughs> <laughs> we can do the 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 kind of later the the late late summer launch for season one if that's what people would prefer. It's totally open, but. Um, that's what I was sensing from the conversations that, that we were having within Discord. And it felt like to me that was a really exciting thing for us to do, um, is to say, look, we're on mainnet now. Like, let's just keep people kind of rolling with it. Um, it wouldn't include aging. Um, we, you know, the promotion and relegation again wouldn't be there. It would be almost like a, an, another opportunity for people to mess around with the game um, and, and to access some extra features. But it just felt right, um, and and we kind of wanted to throw it out to you guys and see what see what you kind of thought and and whether or not that would be something that you'd enjoy. It reduces down the wait time as well, so um, you know we'd be waiting a little bit less time between between now and the next chance to play footy. I and mean, I've heard people in Discord say, "Going like I can't believe this is my last game until season one. Like this is mental. Like I've got to wait ages until I get to play again." Um, I don't want you to feel like that. I want you to feel like you can keep you know, keep enjoying the game if you're enjoying it. So um, that's what's on the cards, right? So um, internally, the we, we're kind of referring it to as a sort of 0 0.5 in conversation. It's not absolutely firmed in yet that we're going to do it. We need this feedback from you guys. We need to know, is this something that you want? Are the things that we can, can provide manageable? Um, and it's very much a conversation. It's very much a rough conversation. And I wanted to bring it up here to, to kind of see what people's um, responses would be. Seems to be pretty positive, but here's a question that might be of interest. Mm -hmm. uh, Playtest to kill the time between the wait is a good idea. Will the official launch be sooner if there is no playtest? The reality is no. Um, the the kind of sprints that the the dev team have at the moment take a set period of time, right? So yeah. we're working on calculations for for real money prizes. We need to make sure that those systems are fair, that they work reasonably. Um, we need to make sure that the training system is up and running. It works positively within within the system. Um, there are UX changes that Angelo is wanting to make. We have a timeline, um, and we and the team know how how long things will take to do. Um, the the feeling was that potentially we could provide a bit extra between now and that season one launch that people could get excited about, um, and and give people uh, a way to get involved and help us quality assure um the the work that we're doing so if that's something that people want to do and and will enjoy then i would love to to kind of provide that for you guys you know we can do more prizes um you know we can do more questing if that's if that's actually <laughs> what you want um you know i we can set those things up um and in and between now and, and that next that's kind of like next potential season we can we can do things like getting the prize drawers out for season zero we can do um the rare the rare player forms we can look at trying to get those drop potentially um you know i've got to work within what the devs are are able to manage so i can't promise anything really um and i get told off when i do so um this is kind of what we're thinking about doing internally um you know bear in mind also we're going to be doing real life events as well i think there was discussion around like euro watch party we're doing this this footy and stadium series do grab a ticket and come and join us if you want we'll be playing five aside tournaments jumping to, to the pub afterwards and, and having a few drinks so um 
so yeah so that's kind of what we're, we're thinking might be viable um that would be something that we would kind of look at within the near uh, near term is kind of getting this next play test out um so that the kind of you know three four five month wait between now and season one doesn't feel as as long as it might do um and and that people are given the opportunity to continue um you know playing with their clubs getting twitter posts up all that kind of thing i appreciate i've waffled now for about five minutes so apologies <laughs> for that well it's pretty universally positive an idea of a play test however questing is down the line literally <laughs> too late and too long <laughs> I think Rooney has disappeared through excitement. At the yeah, of yeah, I bet he has. I bet he has. Good on you, Rooney. Love it, love it. And here's a good question, I segue as well, because I believe this would be included if there was a playtest. Hmm. Um, Pathetic Boy says, I have no idea how training works because this is my first season being engaged as launch is nearing. This hmm. 0.5 playtest potentially, would that involve the training at least as a test as well? So potentially, I think it's yeah. definitely it's definitely something that again that the devs have, have kind of considered. They they've sort of in these conversations that we've had internally, they've come forward with what they would kind of like to see um, if we were to kind of provide some quality assurance time for for them and, and what they would like to test. Um, I can't say how much that would be. It definitely wouldn't be a full season's worth of training. Um, yeah. We've got to bear in mind that if we do another kind of uh, non-relegation season you you can't age players so there's like a balancing thing there but yes we want to provide some kind of uh like reason for people to kind of check in and, and help us with those that, that feedback and we think that that might be a nice way to to kind of reward people for jumping in um marco's uh looking at kind of how limited that might be um, but it will be a chance for people to potentially test it out. Again, give us feedback. Tell us if it works, if it doesn't work. And then it also helps us build guides out, right? So like I'm I'm working on trying to produce more um, first-time user guides. So maybe we can do some bits about training and it will help bring new people in and build the community up. So um, it's definitely something that we would consider. Um, but, you know, there's other factors in there that, you know, might adjust and change as we go. Probably still got time for a couple more questions if people want to throw them in, but I realise Roland again's been put in a hot seat and chatted away for a bit. So um, if I throw it to Tom, just to get kind of your general thoughts on where we are with season zero and potentially with this playtest, what you'd be looking forward to? Yeah, I think season zero has been really fun to sort of get to grips with the game in, in a proper setting and actually have your players. That's the, the best bit for me, actually having my players. Uh, mm -hmm. And I can start to sort of, you know, create those storylines for them in my head a little bit and uh, and start to look around. And I'm sure like, in between seasons, right, the transfer market will still be open, right? So, yeah. uh, you know, I'm going to be looking for players all over the shop, trying to make those right additions to my team and get in contact with managers and, and see what deals we can be doing. And I think if that 0 0.5 is, you know, it does come true, we, we, we do get that, then, yeah, I'm really excited to experiment with the training a little bit because I want to try really invest in some youth academy players, um, most of the youth academy players from season zero I've signed up um, and got in my team. So if I can get a head start there, developing some of those players, that would be really cool as well. Um, you know, for the full launch to get my advantage there. So I'm really, I'm really happy. Uh, I think it'd be really cool to have, have a go at season 0 0.5, test out a, new, a few new things. You know, maybe, I don't know if there's like a, a new bunch of academy players that come through as 0 0.5 as well, because I'd be excited with that. You know, I would love to have a new crop of youngsters coming through that I can uh, get into the team as well and start to build up my squad even more so than it is. So um, I don't know if I'm putting words into your mouth there, but that's what I'd like to see. <laughs> is that where we both just turn and stare at them? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the way, the way. Uh, so, so, yeah, so Academy um, is something that's in discussion. As I said, like, we're looking at rare player drops, right? And rare players will come through the Academy. So, um, you know, if you put two and two together... Uh, sometimes you do get four and, um, you know, potentially there would be an opportunity for us to look at further academy. I don't know what, how many academy players there would be. I don't know what the kind of mint cost of that, that would be. That's very much Marco's domain. Um, but again, that's something that's in discussion. So all of this is kind of theoretical at the moment because it's something that we wanted to throw out and see what people thought. And if that's if people are keen for it, then, you know, it gives us more justification to do it. Um, you know, if the devs feel that it's manageable and that basically nothing awful comes up that they've got to sort out and they're doing huge amounts of uh, firefighting, um, you know, it makes it a bit bit more manageable. But we're kind of thinking like, you know, some, something in midsummer would, would be viable. Um, July was the time that was thrown out. It might get pushed back. It might be pushed forward. Um, 
but yeah so academies are something that we would we would want to look at as part of the kind of rare player testing uh, Willie, that question came up we were talking about uh the team do you want to add more data basically um uh scorers cards etc cetera, etc cetera. that's something that's on our list definitely um there was one earlier on that i've just remembered to go back to maybe this is a good one to finish on and give roland a chance to recover and get a telling off from george after for giving away too much um priorities do you know what the main priorities are for and um, for the team for adding or amending in the game right now yeah so i probably need to pull the specific notion page up so I, and let me just see if i can if i can find your screen yeah <laughs> <laughs> you wish you wish roadmap 2024 uh here we go um so yeah so key stuff um operational security so as we talked about like building out the api systems kind of improving how secure things are how stable they are as we you know we had a, an issue at the beginning of the season um where we had to pause games for the day like we we don't obviously don't want that to be happening we want people to have really consistent um consistent gaming um and and that's really important to us um we we need to work on season transitions right so the end of this season um you know at the moment it just ends right there's no kind of adjust i've got a little puppy at my feet um sorry <laughs> um uh and, and we need to work on the season transition for that um we need to kind of work on the stage one of, of those prizes and, and looking at how that system works training and balancing that's a really key part of it we've got to get that training system out to you guys you know it's been in play tests but it's not currently main net um, and with that comes the kind of user experience um rare players as we as we've discussed rare players when well hopefully now very soon um and and as i said like getting those forms out um myself and, and george were working today on finalizing the type forms um and the logic for that for people to kind of apply for those things um bear in mind with rare players uh the forms will include legendary players legendary player drops probably won't be there that's that's a lower priority for this kind of playtest system our reasoning for that is at the moment i think there's only 10 to 15 people who um who've actually won legendary players so the drop system for legendaries is going to be very different to rares and and so we've got to get the rare systems right before we jump into a whole new system so so legendaries aren't as high a priority it might it might be something we end up looking at um but we felt at the moment that the priority was to kind of look after the um the the kind of larger numbers um and sort those things out um and then as and then and Leroy, if he's watching, hopefully we'll be happy to hear this, um, is an up the trunk, by the way. Sorry, I'll get that there one in go. now before I forget. Um, is uh, is match engine adjustments, right? So we've got, you know, as we've seen, we've had re reserve player issues, um, you know, goalkeeper scoring. Uh, you know, we might want to look at the different formations. There are things within the match engine that we feel um, could affect some of the, the kind of feedback that we've had and the frustration that people have had. Um, and, and that's a really kind of key thing that we're looking at. And I know that that's being worked on actively. Um, I've got another kind of match engine notion page for myself where Archie updates it with the bits that he's done. And I got really excited the other day with the things that he's been working on. So um, I think that those are the kind of key priority areas. So, so rare players, training uh match engine um working on that kind of prizes distribution the stability and security um and that season transition work those are the kind of core priority areas our yank don't worry they've got the list of everyone who has won a rear that came mm. up earlier on so all you'll need to do is fill in the form and they will find you on the spreadsheet and see you it will on. massively help us if you do manage to find those those chat logs obviously i joined about two months ago so i don't necessarily always know um who's who where those things have come from um and and it really helps me if you guys can can grab those those chat logs so there will be a request for that evidence if you can't find it and you've tried and, you, and you're really suffering um we have our own uh, records that we can double check um and and kind of get some clear bits together i have had people coming to me saying oh, i've won four rares and in our logs we've only got three most of the time people are just like yeah fair enough and and that's it right but we've got to kind of have some checks and balances in there um the the reason we're sending that form out is that i've got discord names for all of our rare player winners i don't have wallets so i need that information from you guys i don't have emails i need emails for for off-chain rewards 
Um, so those kind of requests you may see now more often, because if we're going to be distributing prizes, which we're hopefully going to be doing more often, um, I need to be able to contact you in some way and be able to know, you know, where to send those things to. So um, that's that's why those forms will be going around. And, and, and the more you help me, the more I can help you. And, and it is all really appreciated. And everybody's been fantastic. So, um, yeah, any support with that is great. One last question that I've seen that come up a couple of times. Do we know how many rares have been given away? Sorry, um, I, I missed that. Uh, how many rares have been given away? And how many rares have been given away? Yeah, it's a great question. I, I, I don't know off the top of my head exactly. The spreadsheet, I think, is is um, is just over 100. Um, so it's it's not like none but it's 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 a decent amount and we paused giving out any more rare players until um we can we can kind of guarantee say this is the date that we'll be giving them out and this is the form to apply for them so um i've been pushing george now more like i said oh for the for the footium stadium series the seven aside winners do you reckon they could have a rare player by chance and he was like um i think we'll stick to bronze for now and i was like okay fine fair enough okay fine um so george, we know what we want <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 so so we'll start pushing potentially more more of those out if i can i will try i'm gonna campaign i know you know you guys want them um so I'm I'm always you know pushing for those things if I can, um, but yeah, it's it's just over a hundred. Um, that's a lot for for me to have to get through from an admin perspective. So as I said, the more you could help me, show me the evidence that you've got the way you won them. Um, it might be that I've missed or, or Sam missed a competition off the spreadsheet, and I don't want that to happen. I want to make sure that everybody gets um, the rewards that they've been told they would receive. Um, so any help with that is is fantastic. I think that kind of rounds us up. Apart from about 50 messages saying shows the puppy, where's the puppy? Right. Alf, so, get up. Let me see what I can do. Let me see what I can do. <laughs> well, he's trying to cool. rustle up. Good. Oh, here he comes. Oh, oh camera. There you oh. go. <laughs> this is Alf, little footy and mascot. I'll try and get him a little dog shirt made up with footy. And Should we do that, Alf? <laughs> You're half asleep at the moment, aren't you? Tiny. Tiny oh, little baba. It's very that's cute. Just, that's just made the stream from here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, if you're up for 0 0.5 um, and, and you fancy it, then, uh, you know, that would be that'd be fantastic. And and let us know if you're keen for it. Um, you know, we'll be getting kind of news on about the Season 0, uh, getting a badge upgrade. <laughs> um, <we'll> be... <laughs> <laughs> he needs a custom kit design. I'll tell you what, there were mugs for... Um, there were mugs for for footium clubs. If anyone can yeah. find a company that does dog coats with with uh, <laughs> footium for your kits, charities, get them for your dogs. I guarantee you, I will retweet that and post it to high heaven all over Twitter. <laughs> we could make that the next. We could make that the next Twitter competition potentially. I'll so. buy. I'll buy from our dog as well. Quite <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. That'd be great. Um, so yeah. So yeah, I don't know if we want to do a bit of a wrap up, but. Um, yeah. yeah, well, I will wrap up. I'll start with Tom because I feel like we've, uh, we've been badgering Holland to say everything. We've kind of just been sitting like prodding him. So uh, I will let you obviously say your piece and where people can find you and all that. Can I, Janice? Yeah, you can find me on YouTube, Tom FM over there. Um, make plenty of foot manager videos, which I'm sure you would enjoy. Um, and then I'm also in the foot team Discord as well, uh, Tom FM in there. If you want to do some player trades, let me know. Uh, I've got a Division 4 club in Main Sea City, and I've got a Division 7 club in Harring Tor Port. I forget the T sometimes. But, uh, but yeah, so I've got a couple of clubs, uh, and I'm always willing to do a few trades. And Rolando? Yeah, it's been it's been really great jumping on. Um, you know, Mozart and Tom, you're, you're, you're fantastic, and I really value all your contributions in the Discord. Um, Guys, just keep staying, you know, stay as welcoming as you have been. Like, I genuinely, I've been in, in, in Web3 for about four or five years now. And I, this isn't me just saying it. And I know the, people also say it, this isn't me just saying it when they're just saying it. But, like, genuinely, the, the, the Discord that we have within Footium has been one of the best I've seen. Um, you know, the, there's, there's such a positive welcoming culture. People are so friendly. They're so lovely to each other. Um, that's the culture that we want to develop that's what we want people to feel that they can come to this space and have a good football chat play footy and play games with really nice people 
um, and and kind of build up their their enjoyment of footy and football as a whole. So you, please continue to be part of that. We love you guys getting involved in chat. Thank you so much for jumping into the live stream. Um, get those feedback forms filled out. Uh, we'll get them out to you as soon as possible. Uh, let us know what you think of season zero. Keep telling us what you want. Don't worry um, that you're pissing us off because you're not. Um, we want to know what you're frustrated with and we want to improve it. Um, and, and please just have patience with us because we're, we're a really passionate team, but we're limited on time. Um, and, and so, you know, we have to prioritize in certain areas. We do hear you. We do know that um, you're keen for certain things and we just have to make sure that we get the, the most important stuff done first. So, um it's not that we're not listening. Um, we, we absolutely are. And keep telling us what you're looking for. And we'll keep chatting and we'll keep building the game together. So thank you so much for, for jumping in on Season Zero and, and making Footyum such a positive place to be. And if you get the feedback forms um, and obviously get in the Discord and give more ideas, you'll get more alpha. Right. So <laughs> True. Very true. <laughs> but no, thank you very much for tuning in, folks. We've had pretty good steady numbers all the way through so i appreciate you listening to us waffling away and until the next time we'll catch you later on see you later